Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. So welcome to this next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors. And we've got our co-presenter, guest presenter, I don't know how to refer to you, but Steffi Cook, who is the other half of Bob Cook. Um, Steffi is on this episode because she's got a wealth of experience working with children as an ex-social worker. How long ago was that? Um, I started working as a children's social worker in the 80s. Uh, lots and lots of experience yeah. and kind of transferring that into the therapy room. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did quite a lot of work therapeutically with children. I worked with children in, in, um, in a very, uh, in a town in Norfolk. Um, and at the time, there was a high level of child sex abuse. Wow. Uh, interfamilial and, you know, familial um and so I got involved in in working with the, t- the police and the team uh as a child child therapist um helping them to recover from that or helping them to process it at least not recover because that yeah. isn't something that you can recover from really you just no. learn to live with it yeah yeah wow that must have been interesting on one hand and quite traumatic for you on the other hand yeah I've got this thing about you know when people talk to me about post-traumatic stress and how it impacts on them and things you know and to 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 be a witness to somebody else's trauma can have an effect on you just as much as if you're part of that trauma so that must have been yeah that's how I got into the transaction analysis actually because obviously I decided I needed therapy yeah uh, I, I've got a cousin who, who worked with quite a high profile case, probably around the same time as you, and it had a massive impact on her. Yeah. So anyway, we digress. So working with children, we thought we'd touch on the different ways that, that we work with children in the therapy room, whether that's children on their own or children's with parents, you know, and, and how that pans out in the therapy room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so what, what does a therapist need in order to work with children as far as legislations and different training maybe? Well, first of all, I would always say what's really important is that you learn a developmental model. Yeah. So you know how, where that child is at and what the deficits are in their development. Yeah, yes, yeah. I mean, adult, really. I mean, we always say to our trainees that if somebody can't verbalize how they're feeling they're probably experiencing something that's happened to them pre-verbally yes yeah so always always whether it's Stern or Marla or um, Piaget or whoever have a model in your head about how you're going to work um, so that you have an understanding of where the deficits are yes Um, yeah because they they will be stuck in those deficits and that's the area in, in which you need to help them get out of yeah yeah on a therapy one of the things i i refer to an awful lot regardless of the age of my clients is pam levin's ages and stages yes i yes. just love i love that literally yeah. it's it, it it puts things into perspective age related although yeah. i think you know what she was referring to as a 12 year old is probably different to what we're seeing as a 12 year old in 2021 yeah, things have maybe shifted a little bit one way yeah. but yeah I, I like a process to follow I, I find that one quite yeah. useful yeah and so the other part of this this I think is really important is that you have an understanding of attachment and yes. the level of attachment you know um, normal attachment avoidant attachment anxious avoidant attachment yeah uh, you know disorganized attachment have a model in your head so that you understand about attachment because uh, growing up children need to have that continuity of attachment to be able to develop normally yeah very often we'll see that reproduced in the therapy room by how the child behaves whether they're withdrawn uh, wh- whether they're uh, not communicating or in some way showing you their attachment model yeah, they behave. 
Yeah. So if you know that, then you know how to work with them because it's pointless trying to work with somebody, uh, work with a child who has huge attachment issues in a, in a, uh, by involving them in something that will trigger that. Yes, yes. It's important that you don't trigger their previous trauma by doing something inappropriate. So you have to have an understanding of the child model. You have to have an understanding of a, an attachment theory. Whether you read Bowlby Bul or whoever, it's important that you do that. Yeah. And you will get that by the training that you do. So I recommend that you do train. You don't just walk into it and say, well, I've worked in a school, so I know about kids. Yeah. That isn't good enough. No. Um, so to I, I, um, I, I'm a qualified um, nursery nurse, so I kind of all the Bowlby and all that sort of stuff. You but I attended... That. Yeah, I attended your training at the Manchester Institute, the yes. child and adolescent one, and yes. just different techniques of working with children, activities, things that you can do, because some children, you know, as you said, they can't verbalise things. They find it difficult to talk about things in a therapy room. So doing activities or things where they can express themselves. You know, I'm an ex-foster carer, and some of the children that we had, you know, had play therapy. Yes. where they talk vicariously through play and yes they when do. the attention isn't on them often they will talk more freely yeah I remember working with a a, a a little girl she was seven and in my therapy room I had a doll's house and she played with all the rooms in the in the, in the doll's house except for the bathroom wow um, so I knew that was significant, but I didn't push her. And it was a, a fair while before she started to unravel about what happened in the bathroom. Yeah. Um, and so I was so glad that I had that doll's house there because she was able to process that experience. Not fully. No. Fix. Um, um, obviously, I didn't want to re-traumatise her. But I knew that um, she had stuff locked inside that needed to, to be released. Yeah, and that was yeah. a really helpful way of getting that started, getting that process started, because I was able to say, you don't ever go in the bathroom. And then she said, bad things happened in the bathroom and so on and so forth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, one of the, the wonderful things from my experience with children, is they have a way of communicating through their behaviour. Yes. It doesn't. It's not always this. Well, very rarely, sometimes the spoken word, but their behaviour. It, it's about looking what's behind the behaviour. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so very often children will draw something and they will in that picture depict exactly what's going on for them internally. Yeah. Um, or sand play. Um, if you have a tray with things that signify aspects of their life um you know they'll pick the superman or they'll pick the witch or they'll pick the dragon yeah so it really helps you to get a sense of their internal world by using those tools uh, and helping them to unravel what's going on for them yeah i think what one of the things i i, I i'm working increasingly with, with um parents and children together in in a therapy session yeah. um confidentiality and how much do we share or should we share if we're seeing the child on its own with with the family or parents i think that's really important that you from the get-go have a what i call we call it a three-cornered contract because yeah. in, uh, in in my modality we we contract for work so we have a very clear uh, mutually agreed process of what's going to happen in the work yes and so in a three-cornered contract you've got a contract with the child and the contract with the parents and the parents have got a contract with you yes and so usually what I say is um, if I'm going to work with your child obviously what they tell me is confidential but however I'm also very mindful that there will be some things that I will contract with your daughter or your son to share with you because I think it's important that you are involved in this process yes. of change and if it's going to help and support that change for all of you I would want all of you to work towards that yeah and obviously you've got things like safeguarding yes so you can't contract with the child to say I'll never say anything to anybody about anything you tell me yeah because there will be some things that you have to do to protect them so I think it's important that you are absolutely transparent and say obviously I care about you and want to protect you so if there's something I think I need to tell somebody to protect you I will 
yes yeah and that's kind of our there's always a caveat to mine you know that it's yeah. it, it's really important that they see it as a safe space that they can share things yeah but also you know if if I feel you're at risk of harming yourself or somebody else yeah. that then I need to break confidentiality one of the ways that I'm increasingly working with with children and parents is to kind of have sessions with them both in the room and then do individual sessions because a lot for me it's it's not been about trauma in the past it's more about communication breakdown you know with teenagers an awful lot of teenagers so I, I think it's important to work with the parents as well as the children because they're the ones that are with them a lot of the time yeah again I think that's um, really important that you make that abundantly clear that let's work together in this yeah um, and again you contract for that you know I will work with you both <clears throat> and I may have you separately sometimes just yeah. to get an insight <clears throat> which is sometimes difficult because people can't always share everything in front of each other yeah However, again the caveat is this isn't about taking sides this is about working to find a way forward yes 100%. Um, I think it's a skill I think it's a great skill and and, and I think um, I mean, I did family therapy training with the child and family psychiatry clinic that I worked at. Um, and I found that resource so, so very helpful. I think it is a very, very important skill to have. And if you can do that and stay absolutely in, in you know, in the middle and not on either side. Yes. Yeah really really important yeah. so that we completely trust that you are working helping them to work it out to find a way forward yeah yeah, yeah. And, and I think it you know for, for some parents it there's there can be quite a, a big fear of being judged on their parenting skills you know what I mean so for them to have a safe space where you are neutral you're not on anybody's side there's no judgment this is about you know how we work together moving forward so that as a family the communication is is kind of repaired and you can go on because teenage years are turbulent at the best of times they are <laughs> no, one, no one ever goes to university to, to learn how to be a parent to a teenager no no but I think I think there's a lot to be learned from teenagers and I I, I think it's a skill to to get parents to see a different way of being yes. with them yeah um because you know obviously uh, if, if you if you um watch dan siegel's video on it's on um youtube on the teenage brain he will explain that teenagers brains go through huge changes uh and they're either in the in the everything's brilliant and amazing place or everything's really awful place they don't have that middle, middle ground. ground yeah but they are at the most creative uh, and unfortunately as a society we come down very hard on teenagers because they are so in it and doing what they shouldn't be doing and, you know, having a great time. Uh, and we, f we find that, I don't know how come we do, but we find that um, irritating and annoying uh, and we want them to be like us, but they're not like us, they're teenagers. Yes. Yeah. So helping parents to see that is really, really difficult, isn't it? Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes work. I think parents just, need you know information about what's normal you know when they can kind of explore the fact that their teenager's behavior is perfectly normal for a teenager it kind of takes the pressure off them a little bit to allow them to just grow and flourish and you know I find myself so much saying to parents that you know it, if this behavior was being displayed in an adult we would probably welcome it you know they're, they're showing entrepreneurial skills they're showing thinking outside the box they're you know pushing the boundaries and everything and just because it's in a little person we kind of think it's not acceptable yeah yeah i think that's absolutely right uh, and learning to have tolerance and learning to be accepting yes uh, learning to i mean the thing we, we we forget to do is find ways of connecting with them uh, and we get so hooked up on you've not made your bed, you've not cleared up. Why have you eaten all the bread? Why have you left the milk out? Why haven't you put your stuff away? You know, why have I come downstairs and found everywhere a tip? 
yeah so we lose that contact we lose yes. that connection and you yeah. know and it's hard i know it's hard because i've i've had three of my own who were teenagers yeah but finding a way of communicating so they're on your side yeah yes uh, and yeah. so you know i was working with a family that had three boys all teenagers uh, and I said, why don't you sit down and get them to work out what the sanctions are going to be if they don't um, consider other people in their behaviour? Yeah, I and do that quite often. Yeah, they, they prefer, they've got to be on board with it. Otherwise, yeah. they're not going to engage. No, no. So yeah. they've said, right, if I keep doing this, then I think it's only fair that you do that. Yes. You, you stop my pocket money or yeah you know you take the xbox away I, i'll agree to that yes yeah <laughs> because i'm i'm accepting of how irritating it is that you come home from work and i've i've made a big mess and drank all the milk <laughs> you know what i mean so when all i want is a cup of coffee <laughs> yeah so it's yeah. about learning to be considerate of other people yeah and they forget because they're so into their yeah this is amazing they yes. completely forget yeah yeah and that's that black and white thinking again they're, they're, it's not that they're intentionally you know being inconsiderate it's just not in their peripheral vision because yeah. they're living it life very, it very quickly becomes deliberate when they start feeling resentful it very quickly becomes rebe rebellious because yeah. you've turned your your family into a, a almost like conscience concentration like level of punishment of I'm so angry with you. I'm fed up with you. You haven't done this. You haven't done that. Yeah. And so that will turn into that high level of excitement will turn into resentment and rebellion. Yeah. So it's really important that you you get to the get to it before that happens. Yeah. You know that you become more tolerant and a little bit more accommodating of their forgetfulness and their selfishness and their tendency to only see the world from their perspective. Yes. Yeah. If you yeah. Down and explain it to them hang on a minute, I live in this house too, and sometimes I get a bit hurt about things. Yeah. My cat's joining Got us. a visitor. <laughs> then, yeah, I, I think it is, and you know, but I have... It's not easy, it takes a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to really, you know, sit on your hands sometimes when you feel like you just want to, you know, get yes. really angry. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and it, even in the therapy room, you know, it... it it's it's quite difficult I've had you know parents come to me and ask if I'll work with their child and their child has been so reluctant to to talk and obviously not engaged in the process at all you know and I've gone back to the parents and said this this is not going to work um whatever it is particularly because I'm only working online at the moment so it's even more difficult you know children have been educated online for the past two years and it's not it's not how to build a connection um no, but no, they no, can no. be quite reluctant to engage in in any form of yeah. therapy yeah well, I think that's because kids are so frustrated and fed up they don't trust yeah um and of course we're not here to fix things for people people sometimes come to to therapy with their children expecting us to fix them you know yes. here, here, here they are this here's is the problem <laughs> yeah. um, that isn't how things are really it, it's a joint effort yes yeah Everyone has to be involved yeah and I think you know particularly with, again with teenagers I know we've not touched on the younger age range but particularly with teenagers you know I, I'm very aware of being drawn into their game you know that the they're playing where they are disconnecting where they're not engaging in things and you know i i try my utmost to not buy into that which which can be quite difficult sometimes yeah staying out the game it yeah it really is hard yeah i mean people play games because that's the only way they know how to get the intimacy yes yeah um, and the payoff is is a negative one if you play that game yeah so it takes a lot of work to help people unravel that and understand that they're in a triangle. They're in a yes. victim rescue to rescue a triangle very often. Yeah. Um, and that's but, a good technique to teach them, actually. To yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
but but we all know that you know in transactional analysis one of the things that we talk about are strokes and there's positive strokes and negative strokes and any stroke is better than no stroke so if you've got quite a disruptive child in the house and they're getting lots of negative energy it's a connection it is yeah and that's why kids rebel you know yeah. they are starved of what yeah. they really need um and very often sometimes families have that that that's their process that's how they've always been you know they give negative strokes instead of positive strokes yeah and it's it's, it's hard to learn not to do that it's very difficult to make that shift i think you know, working with parents and being a, an ex-foster carer as well, we kind of think, but that's giving in. If I praise them for every little thing that they do when they've literally, you know, been verbally abusive with me yesterday, that's me giving in. And it's like, mm, well, that's that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you have to see that as being tested. Yes. You know, uh, they sometimes don't respond because they're testing out to see how genuine you are. Yeah. And that keeping that continuity up takes a lot of energy and it's exhausting. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I often say to parents as well, it, it, you know, it, for me, it's about being authentic with your children as well and letting them know, you know, my son will come down and I know straight away he wants something just by the phrase that he uses where mom, I will openly say to him, now is not a good time to be asking. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? If if I know I'm not in a good place, I'm not going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's 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 likely to not get get what he wants purely because of the the place that I'm in. And I think that's something that often we don't take into account. It's not just about the children; it's about the parents and what's going on in their life that we bring into the relationship. Yeah, yeah. Even even as as therapists, we've we've got our own baggage sometimes <laughs> so it, it's just understanding that how we communicate with others has an impact on both on us and them I think that's important so if I did family work with a with a um, mother and child or children and parents I would always help them first of all to really understand their own process yeah which is why it's important to have them all together you know yeah. how do you do things how do you ask how do you give rewards how do you you know, when you punish, what kind of punishments do you, uh, sanctions, I call them sanctions, not punishments. Yes, you, yeah. When kids get into trouble, how do you sanction them? Um, so I have an understanding of how they work. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I have to help them unpick that and see that that's actually not very useful. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, you know, to get, to, to have time out, to say to a, a child who's so desperately wanting attention and needing to say, okay, what I want you to do is just go away uh, and do such and such for a few minutes and come back in 15 minutes or I will attend to that but I will do that after tea so you're kind of setting boundaries yes around yeah. yourself so that you're not hooked into the game straight away so it's learning yeah. that's really important. yeah 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 and it's a skill and I think you know when they're younger we, we deal with them you know one way we think we've got this parent in malarkey sorted out and then suddenly all the goalposts move and it's like what I'm back to square one again this is a different person I have no idea what I'm doing with this and that that's parenting you know at the upper end of teenagers allowing them to fly the nest is is quite a, a, you know a, a transition for a lot of parents they are practicing yes. being an adult it is it's when the rose-colored glasses come off your child and they realize that you're a fallible human being yeah we're just winging it <laughs> yeah. and it's it's how you present as that fallible human being that yeah. you know actually you say i'm just the norm this is how life really is and no there isn't a santa claus and yeah i can be ugly when i'm angry you yeah. know it's, it's that kind of reality that if you push my buttons you need to know that that, that there is an impact and yeah. you have to deal with that um so it's all of those things you know learning that you're i, I remember learning that my parents had sex wow that was really don't shocking. say that no they don't <laughs> So it's all of those things that you go through that yeah. you, know, you have differing views. You don't believe in the same things. Uh, sometimes your parents will say something and you'll think, 
I'm definitely not on your planet. But it's learning to accommodate that and accept that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, just to finish off on, I think it's really important as a family to, to explore rules and values and beliefs as well. And every family is unique. I don't think, you know, we, we spoke, touched on the training. Yeah. It, it's it's modifying it for each family because we all have our own standards and values on how we should parent. I always do a kind of what's the worst thing your mum and dad could do for you and I always do with the parents what's the worst thing that your child could do to you and um, you know when they when they say what they say it's really amazing yeah how, the things that they come up with that their parent never thought of or the child never thought of yeah uh, and they assume the complete opposite. And that's what we can bring in the therapy room. Just yeah. an insight into how the parents are for the children yeah. and the, the, the opposite. And it, when it goes well, it's wonderful to yeah. observe. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much, Steffi, for, for coming on and doing this. No doubts we will come back again and maybe look at the, the younger age, working with, with younger children and how we can do that. Okay. So thank you so much. And I'll speak to you soon. Okay. Nice Take care. Jackie. See you again soon. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.